In 1915, Samuel Rosenstock leaves Romania for Switzerland. By this point, World War I has broken out, even though uh, Romania won't officially join the war until 1916. Uh, this move to neutral Switzerland is seen as an anti-war action. It's also around this point when Rosenstock has started using the name Tristan Zara, pretty exclusively. It's unclear exactly what inspired the name. Popular understanding is this was a pun of sorts. Uh, Tristan could be broken up to mean sad donkey in French, but Zara is a misspelling or, or kind of, uh, not an anglization, but a, a, just a, mis, a mistyping of the Romanian word for country. So it, it seems most likely, according to Zara, as far as Zara tells it, the name is a pun for sad in the country. Uh, either way, it fits Zara's aesthetic. In Switzerland, Zara fell in with a group of artists who would go on to found the Cabaret Voltaire in Zurich. The, uh, the Cabaret Voltaire was a variety show of dance, music, poetry, and other avant-garde pieces. Um, yeah. And this, cab this cabaret was primarily founded by the German Hugo Ball and his partner Emmy Hennings. Hugo Ball is considered to be one of the founders of the Dada movement, and I say one of because numerous people claim that title, especially Tristan Zara. Now, Ball was a Catholic German who tried to join the German army at the start of World War I, uh, but Ball was denied this on account of medical reasons. He would then go on to a very rapid disillusionment with the entire concept of war. He said, the war is founded on a glaring mistake. Men have become confused with machines. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> now, the initial press release for the Cabaret Voltaire read, The Cabaret Voltaire. Under this name, a group of young artists and writers with the object of becoming a center for artistic entertainment. In principle, the cabaret will be run by artists, permanent guests, who, following their daily reunions, will give musical or literary performances. Young Zurich artists of all tendencies are invited to join us with suggestions and proposals. It was at one of the Cabaret Voltaire performances in July 1916 where Hugo Ball read his Dada Manifesto. This is not Zara's Dada Manifesto that is on canvas. Uh, that came out two years later. And yes, there are multiple Dada Manifestos because no one could agree on how to do it right. Ball called Dada a new tendency in art. And he claimed the word Dada came from the dictionary, that it means hobby horse in French. Uh, in German, it means goodbye, get off my back, and be seeing you sometime. And in Romanian, it means the whole sentence, yes, indeed, you are right, that's it. But of course, yes, definitely right. These are all highly dubious claims, uh, with Romanian being the most accurate since Dada translates directly in Romanian to yes, yes. Yeah. Ball claimed that Dada was very simple to understand and that to make of it an artistic tendency must mean that one is anticipating complications. He said that poets were always writing with words, but never writing the word itself, writing around the actual point. He said, how does one achieve eternal bliss? By saying Dada. How does one become famous? By saying Dada. With a noble gesture and delicate propriety, till one goes crazy, till one loses consciousness. How can one get rid of everything that smacks of journalism, worms, everything nice and right, blinkered, moralistic, Europeanized, enervated, by saying Dada. Dada is the world soul. Dada is the pawn shop. Dada is the world's best lily milk soap. 
And Ball prepared his audiences for poems, quote, that are meant to dispense with conventional language, no less, and to have done with it. He said it's a question of connections and of loosening them up a bit to start with. He said, I don't want words that other people have invented. All the words are other people's inventions. I want my own stuff, my own rhythm, and vowels and consonants too, matching the rhythm and all my own. Dada is the heart of words. The word, the word, the word outside your domain, your stuffiness, this laughable impotence, your stupendous smugness, outside all the parity of your self-evident limitness. The word, gentlemen, is a public concern of the first importance.